Okay. So, in general, well, not in general, one way of doing this is to sit down in the same room, get everybody who needs to be involved in the process uh, in a room, and start having those conversations. So, uh, organize a workshop. That's um, a lot of times that's how um, prioritizations uh, start. Um, but be prepared to come out of that room with with a modified, <laughs> a modified uh, solution, and not the the solution you initially thought was going to uh, surface out of uh, out of that that meeting. So, um, especially depending on who is leading the discussions and who is organizing the workshop, the uh, outcome, the solution, the prioritization solution may be very different. Um, if we have different uh, uh, different uh, stakeholders. Uh, taking the lead of, of these uh, prioritization um, analysis. Okay, if you are interested uh, and you are not just interested but you are uh, planning to do a prioritization analysis and it is of, I don't know, use to you, um, definitely um, download this, uh, this guide uh, that was uh, published by IUCN. Uh, it's I think late 90s, so it's not the, the most up-to-date uh, uh, guide, but it's a very, it's a comprehensive guide and it's free. Um, it has a lot of information that I think you'll find uh, useful. Okay, so um, as, as we've seen, in order to uh, identify those, uh, those uh, areas that will best uh, meet our conservation goals, we need to consider uh, several criteria. So we need to uh, think about complementarity, irreplaceability, vulnerability uh, of, those, um, of those areas um, in relation to our conservation goals. But there are additional criteria that we must and definitely have to take into account. Uh, co cost of land is an unavoidable reality. We cannot have, um, we cannot extend our uh, network of protected areas if we don't have the means to acquire land. Um, sometimes we can forego uh, buying the land if we, uh, have, um, if we are able to create some sort of um, conservation easement with the uh, uh, landowner or the community that uh, is uh, using that, that particular uh, piece, uh, piece of land that we want to include in our prioritization analysis or a prioritization uh, scheme. And then think about um, issues or, or necessities that are species specific. I know Fikirte talks a lot um, about, with me, <laughs> talks a lot about human wildlife conflicts. That is a very important uh, aspect in large carnivore uh, conservation and you can you can think of your, you know, your own organism or, or taxonomic group of interest and, and specific um, criteria that you have to take into account when doing a prioritization analysis. Any comments or anything that I may have not? Okay. So um, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, criteria and, and considerations to include in our uh, prioritization analysis. It's uh, quite, quite hard to do that without the help of computers. So um, there are uh, algorithms or model, uh, modeling uh, algorithms that have been developed to go through various possible solutions based on all these criteria and and um, evaluate the various possible solutions and select the best solution that uh, best fits our conservation goals. So I want to just uh, touch on two such um, algorithms. I don't have direct experience, meaning I have not run models with these two algorithms, but I'm hoping that very soon Fikirte and I will be running at least <laughs> one of these, these uh, two algorithms. Okay, so the first one that is um, I guess chronologically the first one is uh, ResNet uh, and what ResNet does is um, it's using uh, surrogates for the target conservation and by surrogates we can um, think of number of species for example so the, uh, conserva the target conservation is um, 
biodiversity uh, conservation. Um, then the surrogates would be the number of species. Where, where do we have a high number of species in the landscape? And then um, places or sites on the landscape are, are ordered or ranked according to that biodiversity content or in the example I just gave, simply put number, uh, number of species. And then uh, other prioritization criteria if, if, you, if we have other prioritization criteria. Now this, this diagram, I think it's hard to read in the back, but um, what we do here is we start with uh, our cells with uh, surrogate lists or let's say species lists. Remember uh, yesterday we talk, uh, talked about rasters. So imagine we have uh, a raster grid with cells and then we have number of species in, in each uh, cell. So we start with that, then what we do is we order those cells by rarity, so which cells have species that are found in least uh, cells. So we may have five species that are find, found only in 20 of the 500 uh, uh, cells. That those, uh, those are rare species and those cells that have um, uh, contained those species are uh, uh, cells that meet that rar rarity criterion. Okay, so we all order cells by rarity. Then we go to uh, figure out which unique cell has the rarest surrogate. Let's say um, the least, the, the uh, most unique cell with the most, uh, with the unique combination of, uh, of species. So the rarest surrogate, if we find one, um, that's why we have true here, we go all the way to, this is on the priority list now. Then we go, if it's false, we continue with the, uh, finding the cell with the rarest surrogate and highest complementarity. So it, it's not the rarest, but it complements what is available uh, in the network already. And then if that's true, again we go, we place that on the uh, priority list. If not, we select the next cell on the list uh, and put it on the priority list. Um, and then um, if no cells were, were left in the original list, um, we go back to, if that's false, we go back to the start, uh, and if it's true, we, if we are done with uh, analyzing all cel cells, then we are done, uh, we get the uh, output out of the, the uh, ResNets. So this is a simple, uh, I think, maybe a simple a schematic view of what ResNet does, thinking of just one, um, one criterion. But then we have multiple criteria, which is why we need a computer algorithm to, make, uh, to combine uh, different criteria that we have in this uh, prioritization um, uh, analysis. Any questions here? Yes, Lee. So I might just mention here that the what is an algorithm? It's just a computer um, a problem solving approach. And the reason they're used is because trying to figure out how to represent all species or all ecosystems in a certain amount of protected area is an optimization problem, basically. Um, and there are, because it's an optimization problem, there's a mathematically precise answer to the problem. And there are, in fact, computer programs that will let you solve that optimization problem. Um, and big industries use those computer programs. Um, and the, for instance, an airline, a big international airline with a lot of passengers and a lot of airplanes to program and different fuel costs and different distances and demand for different seats and different airplanes will use a, a commercial optimization program to come up with the best solution for how to program their resources. Conser conservationists generally don't have the five or ten thousand dollars it takes to buy a commercial optimization program nor the computers to run it for days or months <laughs> that may be required. So we've tried to develop cheap alternatives to optimization programs. ResNet is one, MarkSan is one, uh, there have been others, and they use simplified flows and less computationally intense ways of getting at op optimization solutions for uh, reserve selection problems. Um, but they're slightly less precise than the commercial optimization programs as well. So I'll actually show a, a reserve selection result that was derived with an optimization program later on, but it's the same basic principle. It's using computers 
and math approaches to, to find a, a solution to trying to represent the most species in the least amount of area, basically, which is something we generally have to be wanting to do because there's a lot of demand for land. And if we want to bring all species through in a protected area system, we need to figure out how to do it in the least amount of land or for the least amount of money. Uh, and we struggle even when we're trying to do it for the least amount of land or money. But that's... Yeah, no, thank you. That's, that's a good way of summarizing. It's an optimization uh, procedure that we are doing, for sure. Yes, yes, Emily. I'll uh, come eventually. <laughs> Yes. Um, uh, I'm just wondering, in the flowchart, mm -hmm. what is the input uh, data there? Is it text? Is it numbers? Is it, is it whatever? And then two, mm -hmm. um, I think uh, we are talking generally about prioritizing areas, but would you apply the same kind of thinking to coming up with the priority lists? Because I think we are starting at a very high level. Those until you know how to prioritize, prioritize the lists, then you get it low wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, the, the input over there, um, it's, um, it's a grid view of the landscape with cells. And in the cells you have the measurement, uh, let's say, number of species. So that is what goes into the algorithm. I'm not sure if the the format of the file has to be uh, spatially uh, formatted or spatially uh, explicit, like a, a GIS raster, or if, if it can be a text file. Um, I have not it run. Have to be. It doesn't have to it be. Say they don't have to be grid cells. They could be uh, islands. Islands. Or patches. Or okay. Whatever. They can be any any entity. And then the pri uh, the priority lists. Um, I'm not sure I understand. Oh, are you saying? How do you arrive at the priority lists of so species? That also determines um, how successful this process will be. How did it determine which species you will start with? Yes, will be priority. On the well, I think it has to do with your conservation goal. If your conservation goal, if the target is to uh, increase the um, um, conservation of plants, then uh, you want to start with here the cells should be um, species diversity, plant species diversity in a region. I think that the input should should be based on what your uh, your conservation target is. And then the output will be which of the sites have Be best meet or best um, answer your your conservation uh, target. If it's uh, plant species diversity or adding um, those irreplaceable sites. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, it depends on what uh, what your cons conservation target is and conservation goal. Does it make sense? Not quite. Mm -hmm. It makes sense? Yeah. Okay. I think you mentioned something out there about rarity. Mm -hmm. I think it can guide on what she's trying to ask. Yes, that, that's true. If, uh, if the conservation target is um, adding those rare uh, plants that are not currently protected, then what you have is not just a general uh, list of species, but those species that are not included in, in the current uh, uh, network of protected areas. So that would be, yes, it would be a, a rarity um, um, representation. Mm -hmm. or, or I think I just want to make a comment generally from the Kenyan perspective that of all the protected areas, none is specifically for plants. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's time that we use such criteria to come up with something really objective to, to protect the plants. That's, that's a very good, very good mission. <laughs> I think you should take it on. <laughs> um, yes, and it's not, like I said, uh, in many places, 
throughout the world and historically almost everywhere protected areas were not were not designed with with uh, biodiversity conservation in mind so yes it's good to think about um, reevaluating what we have so far and how how good of a job those uh, that network of protected areas uh, does uh, of conserving sorry don't want to take the notebook with me Okay, so this is the first one, ResNet. Um, um, there is a fairly recent paper, I guess, <laughs> 2006, uh, a paper published in Diversity and Distribution in uh, 2006 that um, reviews, uh, up until 2006, studies published um, 